And, all right, you know, I spoke with DPS Transition Manager Judge Stephen Rhodes and Interim Superintendent Alicia Merriweather at the Mackinac Policy Conference. We talked about the efforts to improve academic standards in Detroit public schools, and of course they were watching the debate in Lansing very closely. Take a look. We hope that the final package will be closer to the Senate bill. We support the Senate bill. We think that the elements of the Senate bill are important to the future success of DPS. Specifically, are you talking about the Detroit Education Commission or are you talking about the $200 million in startup both. funding? We really do need both. And why do you think that we need the Detroit Education Commission? Because that seems to be the biggest sticking point it that is. people are going back and forth about in this last week. Yeah. The main goal of the, of the DEC is to, to set the academic standard of excellence for all of the students in Detroit, charter students, and DPS students. Uh, it, it's going to set a standard of excellence that all of these schools will be required uh, to try to, to uh, achieve. Uh, and the reason why I support the DPS is because it provides an opportunity for local control over that standard, which we don't have now. Uh, I believe in local control. It's why I'm in this job. I want to transition DPS back to local control. Uh, and I want to transition all of uh, public education, uh, including the charters, back to, to local control. I believe in local control. Alicia, you have taken this job on in probably the most difficult period of DPS history. And I want you to give us a sense of what teachers are telling you, how they feel right now about, uh, about being in the system, and what parents are telling you about their concerns about if they're even going to have their kids coming back to school in the fall. Sure. So I, I think right now, just overall, there's a sense of uncertainty. So what Judge just talked about, we're clearly waiting still for um, some movement from Lansing. And so that makes everyone who's involved in the situation and connected to Detroit Public Schools somewhat uncertain. So uh, we're looking at, you know, teachers obviously have expressed their frustration in different ways throughout this year uh, around working conditions, around compensation. And Really, I think also just wanting something better for both themselves and for our students, of course. Our parents, uh, we have incredible parents who have stayed committed to Detroit Public Schools. Uh, and so I want to acknowledge that first. We have a, a great number of parents who have chosen uh, to continue to send their students to Detroit Public Schools. And they're asking some of the same questions. What will the future be like for Detroit Public Schools? And I guess what I would say about that is these are questions that we're asking, and it's questions uh, that central office and the academic leadership is also exploring this idea of who do we want to be moving forward and really laying that vision out and then figuring out how do we get there from here. And obviously finances are a piece of that um, trajectory, but the other piece, and I, I've said this before and I'll, I'll keep saying it, if we fix the finances but we do not address the issue of academic excellence, we're still in a crisis. And so that's really where we are right now in terms of conversation, trying to get the focus away from the finances. That needs to be taken care of, but when that's done, we need to educate children in the best way possible. Yeah, and I do want to talk about it because you did come out with a, an academic advisory council that I do want you to elaborate on a little bit. But, but before we leave talking about finances, Judge Rose, let me ask you, in terms of, I mean, you find yourself in this, uh, this pivotal position again in the, city, in the city of Detroit, first your work with the bankruptcy case and, and now this. Have you found yourself trying to convince people to get on board with what needs to be done here with DPS? Um, it, it's so interesting. People understand the need uh, that DPS has for support and for resources. Uh, but there are competing demands on the limited resources that the state has, and I understand that. Uh, but our need for $200 million is, is really a very minimal need. Uh, if we get less than that, uh, it's going to make it harder for us to set DPS, uh, DPS on, a uh, uh, on a path of success, and I'm very concerned about that. All right, so, but once, I mean, to your point exactly, Alicia, I mean, once you have these, these buildings open, all right, we say, here we are, but you have to change what's happening inside the classroom. And so talk to me a little bit about this advisory council that you're putting together to, oh, sure. to analyze what's going to be happening here at the end of the year. So the current academic plan for Detroit Public Schools sen sets uh, June 30th. So it's a perfect time for us to create a new plan because our current plan expires. Mm -hmm. And during this time of transition, I thought it was really important to involve as many people as possible. And so kind of the way I've explained this is 
a lot of decisions in the past were made by small groups of people in, in private rooms and then were kind of put upon people to implement. And now more than ever, we need to be transparent and collaborative and inclusive. Mm -hmm. And so I made the decision that as we form the new academic plan, that I would try to implement those tenants and mm -hmm. put an all call to the entire district and ask anyone who wants to help with our new academic plan to, to step forth. And we've had 136 people, as of this morning actually, 136 people uh, step up and say, I want to be a part of this. I want to help rewrite the course that mm -hmm. Detroit Public Schools is, is headed towards. And so last week we had our first meeting and 95 people showed up. And it was a, an extremely uh, powerful and encouraging meeting. And we broke into 13 committees uh, addressing everything from accountability and actually this idea of grading schools, um, curriculum and instruction, attendance policies, uh, promotion policies. These are all different committees. And what those groups have been tasked to do is to identify at least 10 sources of research on their particular topic that are less than 10 years old and preferably peer reviewed. Right then to identify three mm -hmm. cities or districts with best practices uh, relative to that topic, and then to make their recommendation for Detroit Public Schools. And so they will then present that to the whole council. And by June 29th, we should have something on our website for the public to respond to. And right. so I, I feel very hopeful. And at the end of that meeting, the feedback forms that were collected were just extremely encouraging because as I flipped through them, the center of the feedback form asked your, your words, you know, your feelings in one word from tonight's experience. And the words were hope, uh, invincible, encouraged, you know, as I'm going through in people positive, uh, hopeful. And to me, that showed that not only do we have uh, in intellect within our district, but we also have people who are willing to move forward and have hope for our district being better.